What's going on everybody? It's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis video. Alright guys, a couple things I want to talk about today. We're going to do a, a, an updated tips and tricks video. Uh, there are some things a lot of people keep asking me in the comment section. So I'm going to answer those questions in this video. Also going to address a major problem that people are still talking about and perhaps not understanding or knowing what's going on. So let's talk about the problem first. Before version 1.10 came out, there were no issues regarding linking data. Issues with linking data became an issue at 1.1. Now, just so you guys are aware, the problem still persists. Anyone who has, uh, who is transferring an account uh, to another phone or a device of any sort, there is currently linking data problems, and they are currently trying to get down to the bottom of it. So, you're not the only one. It's not affecting everybody. It's affecting, I'd say, 35 to 50 percent of the player base, which is a lot. But it's still going on, guys. So please don't be surprised that this is happening to you. If it is, I'm sorry. I know it sucks. But somebody wanted me to bring this up and more attention to it. I really hope Square, you guys do fix this. Or AppleBot, I guess you're the devs. So you'd be the one fixing this. And get to the bottom of it. Because there's a lot of players who have not had a chance to touch the game with their main accounts since this has happened. So, again, guys, just want to bring this up. Just know that I'm aware I brought it up multiple times during the live stream. And... And I've, I've been a advocate about it being fixed as much as I possibly can. I have a very small platform, but I have a platform nonetheless. And I will continue to push this as an issue. And hopefully, if anybody watches that matters in terms of the devs or from someone from that team, please note this is a big issue. And I know you guys are working hard at it because these guys have been stellar devs. Um, just hopefully they get it done. Okay? Now... To the actual point of the video outside of that part of course is the tips and tricks now some of these tips and tricks you guys are gonna all know about already some of them you won't so let me start off with the simple one so one that everybody keeps asking about is how do you change your name of your party so i did this in another video already like a couple weeks ago maybe two weeks ago now i've covered it maybe a little less it was when i did an update on my free to play account the way to change your name of the party guys is simple you just quickly cl uh, go to your party menu click swap mode and you're gonna have a little pencil icon here okay and when you click on that, you can just name it whatever you want here, right? Let's just call this one Sefi1. And then you go confirm, and you can see here the name has changed. Now, some of these already have built-in names. Some of them do not because I'm still working on what to call the other ones or what I want them to be. But you guys can see here you can copy and paste teams, etc., right? So that is how you do it. Go back to adjust mode, and you're set to go, right? Because if you go to swap mode, you can actually copy other builds to other sections, which is kind of cool. Okay, so if I want to copy this here, for example, I just paste it, ba bam, there you go, right? And then I can just adjust little pieces here and there the way I want to. So very cool option to have. It's available to you. You guys have a lot of slots that you unlock eventually. I have a youth 20. So quite a bit of slots to rename and play around with. Copy and paste option is a really good way, guys, to not have to do everything over again and just swap little pieces here and there. So that's tip number one, okay? Tip number two, we're going to go to uh, the option section. Now, this is something that everybody should have on, but the game automatically turns it off. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about here. Settings. There is an in-game settings here. I have it on my main account. If you go to battle, right, there's a section here under battle called display buff and debuff icons. This is turned off automatically. Okay. What this essentially does, if you have... On, on, and I'm going to keep it off for you guys, and I'll show you in a battle real quick what it does. Is when it's off, whenever you cast a buff or the or there's a debuff cast on you and vice versa with the opponent, you're just going to see the name without the tier. Okay? So let me just show you guys what I'm talking about here right, real quick. You guys can kind of tell the difference right away when I'm doing it. So let's just go to, let's just do this fight here. Right? Let's go with, um, yeah, let's, show, let's, let's do this, this team here. Okay? We'll go to the Sephiroth team. Everyone's got fire, I believe, on here, right? Everybody? No, no, no. Only one person, two people do. Sephiroth does not. Let me just give Sephiroth fire real quick, guys. And then I'll just show you guys what I'm talking about. I'll probably quit this fight, to be honest, and come back to it later. Just so, again, I can show you guys how it looks. But the purpose of this is to show you how the debuffs look with and without the filter. Okay, very important. It is a very big, distinctual difference between the two things. So let me just equip this anyways, because I'm going to come back to this and finish this after I'm done talking to you guys about it. But let's go to start. I'm going to cast Magic Defense down on the opponent without that icon buff. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys what happens. We're going to go back, set it back to on, and you guys will see uh, uh, the difference, right? And this is important because 
it's going to help you distinguish how many debuffs you have to, or how many buffs or debuffs you have to remove from the opponent, or I guess buffs from the opponent versus debuffs on yourself. Okay, so here, let's just slow things down. Let's go ahead with Telfuric, Telluric, Telluric Fury. I don't know, I have a hard time saying this. Okay, look, so watch. Magic defense down, right? You guys see this? Okay, just the icon, right? Now, if you paused, right, and you went into the enemy info, you could see here magic defense down. All right, let's retire. Let's come back. That's all we're going to do. We're going to retire and come back. Okay, I'm going to show you guys why this tip is so important. And everybody should have this on. Why the game doesn't have this on is beyond me. Uh, I've had it on since day one on my main account. If you guys saw my very hard Shiva fight, you guys will see what, what, what it, this is going to show you. Uh, and I did that fight like a month ago almost. So on here, right? Let's just show you, I'll show you guys what this does now. Watch the difference now, okay? Go back into the fight. Same fight. Now watch what happens when I cast Telluric Fury. This time, you'll see something different on the icons. Please, please, please do me a favor, everybody. Go and turn this option on and do yourself a big favor. It will save you a load of headaches later on, okay? So first off, I should have done this. This should be a little more technical when we do this part. But bam, save a lot more damage. Didn't have to do this, but here we go. Okay, watch now. Look at the difference. You see that? It shows an arrow now. Okay, that one arrow down, right? If you look at the skill, is a low potency if i do it again you'll see two arrows down that means medium potency and that is as high as that goes guys it doesn't go any higher because that is the max as you can see here it would have shown the max would have been medium potency okay i don't care if anybody does this is just a, this is just to show you guys something okay so very important to note that so put that setting on so you guys can understand what's going on okay tip number two i know it was a long one but i think it was an important one so you guys can see this okay tip number three let's go back home for a second i'll complete this up after it's not a big deal um chocobos i'm gonna explain to you guys the importance of chocobos and how they serve multiple purposes okay so chocobo farm first off we're going to talk about the three different types of chocobos and when you need them all right, so very important to note this. So when you go to your Chocobo Expeditions, guys, you're going to see a Mountain Chocobo, a normal Grass Chocobo, and then something called a River Chocobo. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take Sephiroth out because he's level 50 now. Okay, and we're going to see here how all this works. Now, Midgar all the way to the Grasslands, you only need the Chocobo that had the little foot Chocobo icon. Okay, the Grasslands Chocobo. Once you get to Wutai 1 and 2, you need to get yourself a Mountain Chocobo. Very important to note that, a Mountain Chocobo. They're going to have the icons that look like mountains, right? So there you guys can see Foot Chocobo, or the Grasslands ones, we'll call them Grasslands. Mountains have the Mountain icon. And then the last two are going to need to get yourself a River Chocobo. Looks like this little stream here, three little streams. That's what you need to get yourself after that, okay? Very important, guys, to note that. Now why is this important so a couple things to know about chocobos number one the higher the rank chocobo the better the stats now that's important for a couple reasons number one you're going to be able to come back with rare items which will in turn give you blue crystals number two you're going to come back with rare items like this which will help you speed up your chocobos as well as getting other rare items like that and then also with rare higher uh, rare chocobos you're going to get yourself more medals very important things to note now chocobos play multiple roles not only are they going to find you items and other things that you can collect like chocobo medals and other crafting material but if you actually put a high-end chocobo with a character they're a fantastic way to level up your character as well like if you look here i do two of them right if I go 5 out of 15, look at, she got 2,865 EXP that quickly. So when you're brand new or if you're a person who doesn't use chocobos very often, keep collecting your chocobo wings. Do not use them until you get yourself a high-end chocobo. Put your lowest level character in there that you want to level up and just use those chocobo wings and you'll see 
your levels fly. Like I'm, I'm being dead serious. You're gonna get so much out of there. Also every day, this chest does also give you an item. Get in here, always open it after reset. It's always available. And then when you do get yourself some of those rare finding exploration items with your chocobo, go to your mission section. You can claim it, right? You can see here the things you can find and you get yourself the gift section, blue crystals and other things as well. So very important guys, the chocobo section, okay? Tip number, what was that, three? Maybe four, three. Okay, next up. Let's talk about skins. Okay, this is an important one. If you're like me, you probably hate the Sephiroth skin, okay? Something a lot of people don't know is you can actually change the look of your skins even if you don't like the way something is, how it feels, etc. right? So for example, I actually have the, the um, edge wing training garb equipped, but if you go to skins here, you can actually change the way you look, right? So I put on Sephiroth's regular costume and now I don't have to see this ugly item. This also applies to weapons. Okay, if you don't want Sephiroth to be holding this weapon and you want him to hold this instead, you can change weapons appearances based on what you have by just changing the look under skin. So it applies to both. Do that across the board as much as you guys want. Also, to change to summons, some people don't know this, you go to your limit break section and your summons will be there. Again, something people didn't know, I felt it was important to bring up. Some people are brand new to this game and that's an important thing to note. Also, support material while we're here, play a major role in how they function. So when you see something here that says attack boost one or whatever attack boost, it means you can apply yourself a physical or a magical materia and this will light up and you'll get that bonus. If you see something that says this, uh, let me show you it, P attack boost, that means you must have a physical materia equipped beside it. For example, fire blow is a physical materia even though it's fire. You'll see here it says physical uh, fire damage for that to activate and for it to work with the support material. Now there is one that's going to say magic attack as well. If we go to Aerith right here, which you're going to have to equip, you guessed it, a magic damaging material. So for example, Ruin is a magic non-elemental damage. The key word is physical and magic. Now there are going to be other items here that are going to say this. Sigils defeated by matching sigil during attack shift count plus two. So you must have a ruin spell or a rune or a blow or anything that has a sigil boost with the icon X for this to light up and for it to work. Okay, there are other ones also that will give you boost to an element. For example, one of Tifa's gloves give fire boost. You must equip a fire material of any sort on that element for it to function. Okay, very important tip for you guys. Also, just so you guys are aware, main weapons will give you 100% our abilities, stats, and, and support material. Secondary weapons will give you roughly about 55% of the R ability. You do not get any of the support material whatsoever, but you can cast the C ability, which is the combat skill, in battle with the secondary weapon. Sub weapons only give you guys, just so you're aware, the R abilities, okay? And that is only at 50 to 55-ish percent for all of them. Keep that in mind, okay? Very, very important for you to note. All right, another thing you should be doing every single time, just so you guys are aware, and some people don't do this, so I wanna bring it up. When you go to shop, you get a reset timer on something called the Gill Shop here every day. Now, before doing that, let's just go to special for a sec. This is my free-to-play account. There's a daily pack that is always available. Pick it up, it's free, it gives you some Gill, very easy to do just click a button you get it now in the gill shop this is a place that you want to refill every single day now i'm going to talk about gill next because a lot of you are having problems with understanding where to find gill as you guys can see i have quite a bit for a free-to-play player i really never run out uh, i run out of mats way before i run out of gill but i'll show you guys my little secret to doing this i already made a gill video about it but it's always good to talk about because some people don't get a chance to watch all my videos and uh, there's a lot of bits and pieces of information all over the place, right? So I'm hoping this to be a one-stop shop for, for some tips. Now for Gil specifically, once I'm done this, the best place to farm Gil is going to be your Crisis Dungeons and your regular uh, Criterion Dungeons. Those places give you an obscene amount of Gil, guys. So going in there and farming your dungeons is going to be your best method of obtaining an obscene amount of Gil. Also, I've made a whole video here that shows you guys what the requirements are for each trophy 
go check that out as well. And then also the same thing with the Crisis Dungeons. I made a video that talks about every single enemy in every Crisis Dungeon, except for the brand new one, because I haven't unlocked... Or like, actually, this has been completely unlocked as well. So all of them, actually. So if you guys can go in there and check it out, you'll see exactly what you're going up against before you have to go up against it and what elements to bring. Like I said, when you go into an actual Crisis Dungeon and complete it, your first time rewards, guys, are pretty wild in terms of how much gill you get, right? Look at that gill. And it's a lot. And you get three tickets every Sunday, plus other crazy amounts of items, right? So this is the best place to farm gill. Definitely go in and do that. All right. Lastly, the only thing I want to talk about real quick is just story mode. Some people don't know about this. This is everybody knows about this if you've been playing for a while. But for those who don't, if you're stuck somewhere because you haven't leveled up a specific recommended party, all you got to do is simply click on this little button right here that sends you to something called a free party. And you can use whatever heroes you want to finish the story, but you just won't get yourself any of these titles, any of these profile picks, or any of these blue crystals along the way. Just keep that in mind when you're doing it. You can always go back when you have leveled that recommended party and do it over again. All right, guys, I think I've pretty much covered everything that I need to cover. I don't think there's much else here that you guys don't know. Uh, if I did miss something, let me know in the comment section. I'm pretty sure I've got guides pretty much for everything at this point. Oh, for co-op mode. Let's talk about that real quick. When you do go to make a party, you have a solo party and a co-op party, make a co-op party as well. You only need to make one unit. Make a couple elements for yourself. Also in co-op mode, just so you're aware, every first try, just like solo content, is free. Get in there, do every single co-op mode that you can find. Jump onto my Discord if you need help. We're always helping people run content for co-op and get yourself your free blue diamonds, blue crystals, whatever the case may be, and items along the way. Uh, very, very resourceful and an important part of the game. So don't miss out on that. Um, outside of that, guys, if you're looking for a guide, I've pretty much got you covered on every single one out there. I don't think I'm missing anything. Uh, get your battle towers done, which I'll, I will do, by the way, for some folks. I know some folks from stock on stage 40. Uh, I'll try to go all the way to 50 this week and show you guys how I did it on my free to play. But last thing I want to say, everything is absolutely doable and possible as a free to play player. I know on my live stream, somebody felt bad they didn't get their weapon for Sephiroth and wanted to pay, but they weren't, a, they weren't a pay to win. I stopped them. I talked them out of it. And guys, I will continue to promote a healthy spending environment on my streams and on my channel because that's what I'm all about. Do not spend outside your means. It's a game, it's a pixel. You will give this back eventually. You will get nothing in return, okay? Remember that. So if you're not a whale and you've never been a whale, don't start being a whale. Be a free to play. This game is very free to play friendly and you can take yourself places you've never been before in any other game because of the generosity, the community, and the guides out there. So this is Payne. Hope this video helps some of you. If not, thank you for watching. If it did, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.